Hello friends! Our lesson today is about attempts of element classification or the efforts that scientists make to classify the elements. But first I have to ask myself a question why? Why did the scientists try to classify the element? Why well, didn't leave it as it is? Look here with me. As you can see here, there are many, many elements. If I asked you to bring a definite element for me, if I asked you to tell me about the property of any element, will it be easy? Of course not. It will be so hard, difficult. Because of what? Because it's very random. There is nothing organized. There is nothing definite I can search on. So, Scientists try to classify and distribute these elements in a definite way or in an organized way so that it will be easier for you to get what you want. So again, if I asked you why did the scientists try to classify the element, you would tell me two things. Number one, to facilitate their study and number two, to find the relation between elements and their chemical and physical properties. Both of them would be easier when you classify the element and make them organized. After we know why did we classify the element, let's see who are the scientists who tried to classify this element. We have three scientists tried to classify the elements. Mandeleev's periodic table, Mosley's periodic table, and modern periodic table. Let's start with Mendeleev's periodic table. Here, when Mendeleev tried to classify the element, there was only 67 elements. And he was the first one who tried to classify this element. What did he do specifically to classify the element? Look here. Number one, he prepared 67 cards for this 67 element. As you can see here, cards like this. Uh, he made 67 cards for the 67 element. And then he wrote some important details in each card. What are these details? Number one, he recorded the symbol of the element. For example, as you can see here, this is something called selenium. So he put the symbol of selenium, which is SE. Number two, he wrote the atomic weight. And number three, some important properties like melting point, boiling point, density. There's many other properties, but he wrote only the most important properties. Okay, it was number two. Number three, after he made the 67 card and write the details on them, he arranged these cards or the elements of similar properties in vertical column. Vertical means like this. This is vertical, above each other. So vertical column is called group. Again, number three, he arranged the elements of similar properties. Similar properties, which means they have, for example, similar melting point. If we say that lithium has melting point 30, sodium would be 30.1, or 30.2 they are close to each other similar not the same but similar okay number four he arranged or he classified this group into two subgroup why because after he put the similar properties in a vertical column he found that they are not so close from each other so he decided to make each group as two groups two subgroups A and B as you can see here for example for the first group he made it A and B so for A he has hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium for B he has copper and so on when he found that the property is not so similar he get it away in another subgroup which is called B but at all the elements of the same group has similar property okay it was number four Number five, he arranged the elements of or according to the atomic weight in a horizontal row. This is called horizontal row, when they beside each other. 
Again, if they was above each other, it's called group. If they are beside each other, this is called period. So he arranged the elements according to the property in group, but according to the atomic weight in period, like this. For example, lithium has atomic weight 6.94, beryllium has 9, boron has 10, and so on, from smaller to the bigger one. When you go from the left to the right. But after he did this, he discovered that there are repeated property in, per, in each period, which means that if we said that lithium, for example, here in the first group, oh, sorry, in the first period, if we said that lithium here has high melting point, then beryllium has medium melting point, then boron has small melting point, when you go to the next period, you will find that sodium, like lithium, has high melting point, magnesium has medium melting point, aluminium has small melting point, and so on. So the properties are repeated periodically. When you go for each period, you find that the property is repeated. It was all the steps that Mendeleev did in order to classify the elements in his per table. So again, we can summarize them all as number one, he made six, seven cards. Then he wrote some details, which is simple atomic weight and some important property like melting point, boiling point. Number three, he arranged the elements of similar property in vertical column, which is called the group. And classified this group into two subgroups, A and B, due to the difference in property. Number five, arrange it according to the atomic weight in horizontal row, which is called the period. But look here, for Mendeleev's reddit table, Mendeleev's considered, or he was more interested in the properties. He didn't consider the atomic weight as much as he considered the property. And therefore, there was some disadvantages for the Mendeleev's reddit table. Look here. From the disadvantages of Mendeleev's periodic table that he, number one, distributed the ascending order of the atomic weight. He made some mistake in the horizontal law of atomic weight. Why? Because he was interested more in the property. So that if he asked you give reason, you would say to put them in groups that suit their property. He was interested more with the property. And neglect what will happen for the atomic weight and that was really a big mistake number two he iterated with the isotopes are different element what's meant by isotopes isotopes means like this as you can see here same element this is carbon and this is carbon it has atomic number six and it has atomic number six too what is the difference here yes the weight or the mass number. Here for this carbon it's 12, but for this carbon it's 13. Does it mean that they are different elements? No. They are the same elements, but with different mass number. Actually, Mendeleev didn't know this, and he considered that they are two different elements, and it was wrong. So it was the second disadvantage of Mendeleev that he created with the isotopes, and they are different elements, but actually they are not. Just they have different atomic weight or different mass number. We cannot say that Mendeleev didn't have advantages. He must have advantages. What is his advantages? Look here. Number one, after he arranged the elements by his way in a horizontal row, according to atomic weight and vertical according to property, he found that there are some elements that still didn't discover. So that what did he do? He left empty cells in the table. As you can see here, titanium here and sperstium here. There are question mark. This question mark are spaces left for the element that he, 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 he attained that the scientists after him will discover this element. But he know that there are some elements here. He still didn't know them, so that he left cells for them. 
It was his first adventure that he discovered the presence of new elements. Number two, he corrected some wrong atomic weight. After he arranged the element in a, vert sorry, in a horizontal row or in a period, he found that there are some wrong atomic weight and therefore he corrected them. You see? Can you see this? When you arrange anything, you can see it clearly. You can see what you want, you can see what's wrong, and so on. So that's some test is tried to classify the elements. Okay. Now we finished the first periodic table, which was for Mendeleev's for Mendeleev's. What about Mosley's periodic table? Let's see. Mosley's periodic table. Before we talk about Mosley, there was a scientist who called Rutherford. This scientist who called Rutherford discovered that there are positive charge in the center of the atom which is protons so if i asked you who is the scientist who discovered the presence of protons in the center of the atom you will not say mosley it's rutherford rutherford who discovered the presence of protons what did mosley do mosley here makes some edit for the periodic table look after Rutherford discovered the presence of protons, Mosley gave them a name which is called atomic number. So what Mosley did is just give the protons a name, which is atomic number. And number two, discovered that the periodicity of the element property is related to the atomic number. What exactly does it mean? In Mendeleev, we said he considered the atomic weight and the property because he thought that there are relations between the atomic weight and the properties. Actually, it's wrong. But as Mosley discovered, is that the property related with the atomic number, not atomic weight. Okay. Now let's see what did Mosley do with the periodic table. Number one. He arranged the elements according to the atomic number, not atomic weight as Mendeleev's do. So he considered here the atomic number. If I asked you, Mendeleev's, uh, Mendeleev's classified the element or arranged the element according to what? You will say atomic weight, but mostly according to what? Atomic number. As you can see here, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, magnesium, and so on. This is the mass, oh, sorry, this is the atomic number. 21, 22, 23, so who considered the atomic number. And as you can see, the atomic number increased in the period by one for each element. So it was 21, the next one, 22, the next one, 23. As you can see, it increased one when you go from left to right. It was number one. Number two. He specified a place below the table for lanthanides and actinides element. As you can see here, there was some or so large or so many elements in the periodic table. So to make the shape of the periodic table more clear and more organized, he decided to take the groups of lanthanides and actinides below the table, this red one. These are lanthanides and actinides. They was here, but he took them below the, the periodic table. What else? Look, number three. We said that uh, Mosley left some cells due to the predict. The, he predicted that there are many other elements that still didn't discover, right? Look here, Mendeleev's, or I'm sorry, Mosley discovered some of this element. So he added zero group, which is inert gas. He found them. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Mosley put this zero group. And number four, he added other element that's covered after Mendeleev. So we can summarize all of this again. Mosley did what? Number one, arranges the element according to atomic number. Number two, he left or he put below the table lanthanides and actinides element. 
three and four, he found the uh, elements. He found some elements. He found or he added zero group, which is called inner gases, and he added some other element that's covered. It was for a Mosley's periodic table. So we finished Mendeleev's periodic table and Mosley's periodic table. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, leave it for me in the comments. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.